Good afternoon and welcome to the October 1st CONFAB. Uh, happy to have you with us today. Uh, as of today, we have no new cases with any of our residents or staff members. Um, the data for the Central Virginia Health District is about the same. The 14-day running average of new cases has been constant the past three weeks at approximately 33 new cases per day. Uh, the month of September, somewhere in that low 30 range as well. Uh, we want to see this dropping more towards the 20 mark before we start feeling more comfortable. So uh, please continue what you're doing. You're doing a great job keeping these masks on, social distancing, uh, avoiding crowds, and being careful if you choose to travel. So thank you. The call-in number is 6304. If uh, you'd like to call in, even before we get towards the end, Angela can write down any questions you may have. And as always, uh, you're more than welcome and uh, able to email either me or Angela any questions prior to CONFAB. So we have a couple of different speakers today. Uh, we're going to have Sandy Romare talk about the Christmas Fund, uh, Chaplain William and Debbie Callahan all talking this afternoon, so got a couple of different speakers. I want to go to, uh, real quick, catch me at my best. Uh, Building and Grounds takes the, the uh, cake this week, this month actually. So uh, first, Leslie Camden, Administrative Assistant in Building Services. Whether contacted by phone, text, email, or through website, Leslie is unfailingly at my service. She acts promptly and appropriately and never seems tired, too busy, annoyed, or unreceptive. She is always pleasant and sometimes shares a great sense of humor over the situation. Thanks, Leslie. Congratulations, Leslie Camden. And the second one is Matt Ward, Assistant Director in Building Services. Story goes, the hot water in my shower cannot be controlled and it was a dangerous situation for me. With Matt's experience of renovations, he investigated the problem thoroughly. I do appreciate his diligence and his persistence in making sure that there would be no more dangerous hot water in my shower. Congratulations, Matt and Leslie. Thank you for all you both do. I will now ask Sandy to come up and talk a little bit about the Christmas fund. Sandy? Good afternoon. It's that time of year again. Merry Christmas. I received a note or an email from our COE uh, this morning. And if you think that I had a head injury and not an arm injury, uh, no, it is COE, our chief operating elf. And so she sent me a note that says, since September the 1st through the 28th, we have collected $47,277,000. Not bad, not bad for one month. It has come not only from independent living residents, but from assisted living, health care, senior independence, Azalea option, and Canterbury Club members. When we think about the fact that Canterbury Club members only got about, what, two and a half months out of this year so far, we're thankful that some of them are, are contributing at this time. We also have about 80 plus monthly donors. Uh, their donations are not yet included in this 47,000. Usually we don't get that information until sometime, maybe latter of, uh, part of uh, October or into early November. We get it in two uh, segments. The bulk of the money comes first, and then as we get closer to the end of November, we get the final number that's coming out of the monthly. Uh, so we encourage you to keep giving. You know, we have some great people here that have been working with us. And I can certainly attest, uh, after my little accident, a uh, number of people have, have just stepped up and said, what can we do, or just did, things that needed to be done. And I am very, very thankful for that. So let me encourage you. Also, make sure you read Margaret Simpson's little blurb and the weekly update. It is very good, real different, but very appropriate. So get a hold of that weekly update for this week and read that. Thank you very much.
good afternoon. As many of you are aware and have asked, uh, Reverend Christy Miles' husband, Reverend Brian Miles, uh, is, is in ICU. Um, I ask for your prayers continued uh, for them. Uh, but I also asked Christy if I could update you today on CONFAB since it goes out broadly, but also if I could share her address, uh, and you will see that right now. Uh, you can send cards. She said uh, that those are the best uh, medicine for them right now. Uh, just an, a, a brief update. Brian is in ICU. He is on a lot of oxygen. They've changed his uh, breathing machine to be a, let me see what she said, a high flow oxygen therapy. Um, the COVID-19 is rapidly and, and, and viciously attacking his, his body and we just pray for healing. Pray for Christy. Um, she and Joseph are at home quarantined, uh, remaining healthy, um, uh, but, but away from Brian. I do want to share something that she uh, wrote on Facebook the other day. She called it today's scriptural multivitamin. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angel, angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, even COVID-19, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 through 39. So we continue to pray for Brian, for Christy, and for Joseph. And if you would like to send a note, I know that they would greatly appreciate it. And you can see their address there. A few other uh, of updates. Uh, just want to remind you that we are having uh, Sunday worship services for independent living at 9.30 and 11 a.m. You can sign up on the activities board. Sometimes the sheet gets moved around because the space is needed. So just look for, uh, it's got a big highlighted yellow on the front of it. You can't miss it. Um, we are beginning next week uh, worship services in healthcare, assisted living, and memory support. They will be on Wednesdays. Uh, 10.30, raise it up, 10.30 uh, in memory support, 2.30 in health care. We will go f one floor uh, a week uh, through the month, and then assisted living will gather on the mezzanine in Drinkard at 3.30. Uh, I'm looking forward to being with those residents, uh, looking forward to singing, to having some Bible study, to just getting to know uh, them as well. Uh, we are now in October, and a month from today, uh, well, month from the 1st, so it is the 1st. Uh, on Sunday, November 1st, is All Saints Day. Uh, typically, we have invited folks in to celebrate and remember uh, loved ones who have died, uh, but unfortunately, we're not able to. Um, you'll see in the October newsletter update uh, some instructions there, and it will be sent out to the families, but we will be live streaming on YouTube, and that video will also be there uh, after the live stream for folks to view who cannot attend. Uh, we will be inviting those who uh, are uh, residents here who are remembering a loved one. They will be coming to participate in the service. But that will be Sunday, November 1st at 4 p.m. in the chapel. And it will be live streamed on YouTube and also on uh, 970. And we will replay that as well uh, at, a, at another time uh, in, in the day and in the week as well. Anyway, thank you, and thanks for your prayers for Christy and for Brian. I know they greatly appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. I had to bring some notes with me today. It's been a little while since I've had the opportunity to talk with you all, and uh, I thought I'd give you a lot of updates because there has been a lot going on, quite honestly. Uh, you see the artwork on the screen there. It says, Big Hearts Deserve Big Hugs. And for all of you that you've contributed to Westminster Canterbury uh, over the recent months, your continued confidence and support uh, through your charitable giving is very, very uh, appreciated and means so much to all of us. I uh, wanted to just give you some uh, recap on the gifts that have been made to the Westminster Canterbury Lynchburg Foundation uh, for this past fiscal year, which actually ended just yesterday, September 30th. We first accomplished the closure of the Mission 2020 capital campaign, and that concluded with a total fundraising of 2035300 I can't even say it right. <laughs> 2.35 million, I'll get it out eventually, uh, which has been put to work 
helping Westminster pay down the debt on the construction project which created and built the Drinkard Healthcare Center and also accomplished all of the renovations to our dining and wellness spaces. So thank you ever so much for all of that. Uh, we recognize sustaining donors by initiating and inaugurating our Buster Baldwin uh, Society in February. Yes, it was February. We actually had a special event in this very room in February, pre-pandemic. Uh, it's hard to believe that it was actually still in this year, but that's the truth. Um, we're going to be having some news about some of the members of that society in our next issue of the Vision Newsletter that we'll be sharing in a little bit. This spring, you responded very generously when we asked for your assistance to, to create a pool of money to help our hourly employees who house, whose households experienced a negative impact uh, due to the pandemic. And uh, this continues to be a challenge for some folks. Your October newsletter reports the em Employee Emergency Assistance Appeal brought in $48,532. Will you continue to give? Recent contributions now make this total $50,743 raised. What a wonderful testament to your appreciation for all of our staff. Uh, and distributions still continue. Uh, William, uh, our chaplain, is um, continuing to do that. So he's the contact for that initiative. If you know of someone that you think could um, need some assistance, uh, call William on their behalf or encourage them to call William. It's all very confidential and we do want to help our employees. The Westminster Foundation was also blessed with some very substantial estate gifts over the past fiscal year. Uh, these gifts have actually totaled more than a million dollars and continue to support the needs in Westminster Canterbury and will for many years. If you're thinking about how you might make an estate gift, and would like some information or have questions, please don't hesitate to call me. I'd be glad to talk with you about it. Uh, my phone extension is 3507. Another effort that you responded to was just this past August when we told you about the needs of the music ministry provided by Susan Carroll. Susan's musical time with our residents in healthcare and assisted living will continue thanks to your very generous contributions. The gift total has grown now to $10,330, and this is over the goal that we set. Thank you so much for helping to keep this beautiful music playing. The last item I wanted to talk with you about today is our annual fellowship appeal. Last year, during the appeal period, we raised $161,023 towards confidential financial assistance to residents. Our fellowship fund helps people who, through no fault of their own, need financial help. This confidential program helps provide food, pays monthly bills, covers medical expenses, and does much more. In the 40 years since Westminster Canterbury opened its doors, not a single resident has had to leave because they couldn't pay their bill. Fellowship is the core mission of Westminster Canterbury. Very shortly, you will receive another message about this year's fellowship appeal in the mail. I hope you'll consider this new opportunity to help your neighbors and to make an impact on their lives. All the things I've been talking about were needs when we began this stressful journey through the pandemic. Today, they are resources thanks to you. Our campus would not be strong and successful if it weren't for donors like you. We deeply appreciate your generosity especially during this difficult time of the coronavirus pandemic. We are very, very grateful for your support. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Debbie and uh, William. I appreciate that. A um, Couple of public service announcements. Tom and Yona has asked me to share some changes to the resident website. Um, the link to schedule family visits can be found at the top of the resident life page. Family members can also use the Westminster Canterbury public website to schedule a visit as well. And we ask that you try to do that just to let us know uh, what kind of traffic we can expect on campus and try to plan for that uh, as best we can with screening tables and things like that. The video of what's your favorite WC thing has been moved to the resident life page. 
The WC Facebook page has been moved to the Resident Life page as well, and there's also a link to Facebook on the bottom of the welcome page. <laughs> the link to order groceries online can be found on the bottom left of the dining page. Simply click onto the dining services portal, and if you don't have a published email address in the directory, you will have to register for this service by calling Keith Sutton directly, and his extension is 3592. So um, this is just uh, obviously done to help clean up the welcome page. And uh, Tom, we appreciate you and your team doing this, uh, all this work on the website and uh, keep it going. We really appreciate it. I was on there this week a couple of times looking up some stuff. So I thank you as well. A reminder for flu shots. Flu shots will be available to all residents. Uh, we ask that you fill out, uh, we'll have it there when you come check in, a flu consent form in the resident clinic. And uh, starting next week on the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 9th, uh, there will be uh, flu shots given in the clinic. If you go to your um, weekly, you'll see on page 8, uh, all the different times there. Starts at 9 to 11, again at 1 to 3. Uh, they also will be giving the following week, October 12th, 13th, 14th, and 16th will be giving shots. Uh, again, that time will be 9 to 11 and 1 to 3 as well. Uh, please contact the resident clinic if you have any questions. I think this year is probably is more important than any other year that uh, I can remember that we all get our flu shots. And uh, it is a requirement that our staff get them. Uh, it's not a requirement for our residents, but I think it is being... Uh, urged as uh, something for all of us to do. So I will go back and again, just from the start, uh, we have no new cases for staff or residents. Round 13 of testing for our staff in the healthcare center was performed on Tuesday the 29th. Uh, again, no new cases from that testing, not all in yet from what I understand. Round 14 will be next Tuesday the 6th. Uh, staff numbers to date we have had 17 people who have been uh, infected, and 14 of those have been identified through testing. So the three uh, were somehow identified um, between testing, someone not feeling well, going to see their doctor getting a test. So 17 staff members, 14 of those identified through testing. We um, are in the process actually today of applying to go from the state's phase one into phase two. Uh, and all that is a little muddied uh, by the fact that CMS is uh, starting us to have visits uh, once we get past our infection date, which has happened now. So uh, we should be going into phase two. Phase two does not allow for visits except for end of life and compassionate care. We have been working with our independent living residents who have spouses over in healthcare or assisted living to make visits, and that has actually just started up again today. Uh, that is falling under compassionate care visits. So uh, right now, residents with loved ones in healthcare are making visits again starting today. That is limited, and we hope that will expand over time as we continue to move down this road. <laughs> We will be welcoming families, all other families in healthcare that have loved ones uh, that live out in the community uh, coming in next week, October 5th. Uh, again, that will be limited, but will be offered to folks and uh, families will be coming in. I think there's no more than two family members at a time. Those visits will take place outside. We've got some plexiglass set up and we have uh, tents set up for that as well, but those will take place outside. <laughs> The positivity rate is one of the other numbers we're tracking. On the screen here, we showed uh, the numbers in central Virginia, and uh, the, the city went up from a little over 1,000 to somewhere I think of around them was 1,400, and uh, for the health district, started somewhere in the 23, 2400 range and got up to, uh, looks like somewhere around 32, 3300. So as we said, those are going up somewhere around 32, 33 per day. But the positivity rate is the number that is tracked for CMS. That number is uh, this week posted on the 28th was 8.2. So that requires us to continue testing one time per week as long as we sit above that five but below the 10% range. 
last week or the week before, I talked about our home care business with Senior Independence, which is sitter and companion service, that that would be stopped. Uh, we are working with a couple of clients. Uh, we'll continue those relationships, but have stopped taking new clients. And um, the important thing there is we will keep those going, but uh, we will still do home health, which is a lot of nursing therapy type visits, and we will still keep doing hospice. We have no plans to stop that. So home health, hospice continue going. That home care consigner, sitter companion service will be uh, on its way out. And then um, I think that completes my report. We'll continue as I end all of these. Uh, please continue to wear your masks, social distance, and wash your hands. Uh, interesting, there was a USA Today article about a small school up in the Northeast that has done really well, and uh, I think those kids have to wear their mask about everywhere they go. But uh, a lot of testing, a lot of mask wearing, and uh, seems to have been a very positive situation there. So uh, please keep it up and uh, have a good day. Thank you.